and I'll tell you how many how many suggestions we got. Okay. And then you just pick a number and we yep. we just go. Like we uh yeah, we just we just start. Um and Great. however however you want to play is cool with me. Great. Great. It's improv, so. Right? I've yeah. done most of them have been like real time one scene. So but if you want to jump around however you want to do it, I'm down for that. Cool. Okay, great. Um all right, let's see. One, two, I will pull us I will put us on now. And then you tell me, let's see. We've got one, two, we got 41 suggestions. So pick a number, one to 41. I'm gonna go with 14. Oh, 14, good call there. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12, 13. This comes from Michael, and the suggestion is it really was a case of life or death. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Can't believe this happened. I mean, I'm, I'm still. Look at me, I'm still shaking. My hands are, I'm trying not to, my hands are still, my, my hands are still shaking. I know. I feel like I need a drink, like some water or something. Me too. I wonder, I wonder if anyone saw the accident. I don't know. I was too scared to look. I mean, it was loud. Just like shake it off. Yeah. Just gonna like shake it off a little bit. I feel like I want to sit. I, you said you just stood up. I feel like I I need to sit down. Yeah. Honey, that car was going like what, like a hundred miles an hour? It had to be. It was. So fast, it was out of control. And then bam, it was like out of nowhere. I know. And it just kept going. I don't, I didn't see anybody on the highway. I... Yeah. And they, they just took off. Yeah, they just kept going. What the hell? Some people just do that, right? Some people just, they don't want to stop. They just want to keep going. I'm just happy you're safe. I know, me too. I'm, yeah. I'm happy that we're both safe. I mean, it was like six more inches, different story. I know. My God, if, if you didn't forget your coat, we, wouldn't have stopped to, wow, so it could have been different. Game over. Right. <sighs> New lease on life, right? We gotta that's, stop putting stuff off. That's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly what I'm thinking. Today's, everything changes from today. This is a sign. This, this is not, I mean, we can get a new car, that's fine. But yeah. you're right, we gotta stop putting things off. Doing things right now that we wanna do rather than waiting. Because if we wait, there's no guarantee that it's ever gonna happen. Right. And we need to stop being so cautious in our life. I was thinking that exact same thought. We're, right. We have to plan everything. We have to make sure that everything's okay. We throw zero caution to the wind. We, we focus on the wind. We don't focus, like we make sure that the, okay, we wanna make, we wanna make sure everything's safe. So we're, right. instead of worried about the wind, we should just throw that. We should throw the wind to the wind. Right. Wow. Oh. 
we're so like, you know, we have our jobs and we like pay our mortgage on time and you know, everything is lined up and in an order. I, we should like sell the house and go travel around the world. Dare we be one of those couples? You know what happens? You hear about these couples, right? You hear about these couples and they go, we decided to make a change in our life. And then we did. You never hear and it went terribly wrong, right? You always hear they make a change and it's always for the better. But I think that that, that fear is what's holding me back from doing any of that. But, but, but that cautiousness never gets the big reward. Right? Oh my God. Who cares that we own a house? I don't even remember ever wanting to have a house. And I now we've like we're programmed to just do what you're supposed to do. My, my whole life has been a program and my whole life is like, I can't wait, right? It's like, oh, I can't wait to get my driver's license. Ah, oh, I can't wait to be able to drink legally. I can't wait to get my job. I can't wait to get established in my career. I can't wait to, and now it's like, what? I can't wait till I retire. And then what's next? I can't wait till I die. Like we're always putting things, we're worried about things in the future and not about things in the present. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to get rid of the mortgage. I'm ready to get, I mean, we already got rid of the car. <laughs> we literally, <laughs> it was a sign, right? It was a sign. Somebody's, there's something saying to us, you know what you two need? You need to get rid of this thing. And right. I, feel, I feel like, I mean, where did I hear it? Somebody said, you know, I don't own these things. These things now own me. And I feel like that. There's no reason for us not to get rid of all this stuff. It's a fear. The fear is controlling us. Right. I can't believe you want to do it too. Let's quit our jobs. Let's just go. And then just see what happens. Right. That's it. I'm gonna I'm right now. I'm in. I'm gonna send. I'm. I'm gonna send an email. You know, what's funny is I've got a draft of a resignation letter I've been too scared to send. Really? You were yeah. gonna quit? Yeah, I've been thinking about it for a long time. I haven't been happy. It's not that I've been, it's strange. It's not that I've been like unhappy, but I've just not been happy. Right. I felt comfortable and that's a dangerous place for me to be. I know. I'm just, you know, it's interesting, like you didn't talk to me about that. Like, I, you know why? I've been too scared. I thought if I came to you and I said, hey, honey, I want to quit my job. I thought you would say very valid reasons I should keep my job. And then I thought, how selfish, how selfish would it be for me to want to quit my job, having nothing lined up and then putting all that responsibility on you? Like I. I just thought it was an unfair thing for me to think about. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But now we're both on the same page. Yeah. I mean, we almost died. We've been talking about wanting to go to Italy just for how long now? Ever since we met. I mean, we talked about, do you realize we talked about that at our first date? That was what we connected with was Italy. And I'll never like, that was the first thing where it was like, I'm gonna, and I remember we talked, we both were going to go. We both were like, we're going. And then one thing and then another and then another. And then we never, we never went. We had opportunities, but we never did. I think you should push send. Right? Well, you... I did. Oh my God. Oh my God, you just quit your job. I just quit my job. You know what? I almost quit this earth. I almost just quit this earth. I'm, a, I, I'm not going to let things 
stop me and we aren't going to let things stop us anymore this this was a sign this was it's like an awakening right now i feel right. energetic i feel scared but i don't feel i don't you know what it is i don't feel scared that i'm not going to survive because i have you like i feel i feel like scared of the unknown but i would i'm more scared of the known i'm more scared of knowing that I was going to continue on that path. That's scary. The unknown isn't as scary to me. Right. We're going to, and I. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send it. Okay. Send it. Type. Don't, okay. right, I'm don't doing make it, it too right. long. Just two, two sentences. Okay. Two sentences and then send it. Right. Really? I did. Is no, no income is coming in after I, after I had sent. Okay, but we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And this, I mean, we have skills that we can use. We, I haven't been without a job since I was 15 years old. Therefore, I'm going to be able to find a job somewhere. Right. We are survivors. And you could program anywhere. You you know that every time we watch one of those like shows where they're like, I've decided to move like house hunters, they're programming from everywhere. So you've got something that you can do from anywhere in the world. Okay, here it goes. Send it. Send it. I did it. <laughs> one way ticket to Italy. Oh my God, I'd rather spend the rest of my life experiencing things than spend the rest of my life talking about experiencing things. Me too. And I'd rather do it with you. Me too. Everybody's going to be jealous. You, you know what, when you hear somebody, when my cousin Fred quit his job, I, my first thought was good for you. I wasn't thinking, oh man, what a mistake. I was thinking, man, what a brave thing to do. Good for you. And he's never been happier. I have intense respect for people that take big leaps like that. Yeah. It's time we have respect for ourselves then. Right. We just have a few things to line up. We'll get a renter for the house maybe and... I mean, we've already it. lined some stuff up. Now we're gonna take it moment by moment. Right. And whenever, if we get scared, we have to tell each other and remind each other everything is moment to moment and everything's gonna change. Right but it's all gonna work out. And we're not gonna back out. We can't. We, no. can't, we, we can't back out. We only move forward. Right. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I actually felt like I quit a job. <laughs> <laughs> That was so wonderful. I love that you're fun. like, every step of the way, you're like, yeah, let's do it. It made it so much more fun. It, it, I'm jealous of the character in that. <laughs> well, and I do, I was playing a little bit of truth in like my own personal experience of like, when you hear, when I hear people like that, like I, I just saw on Facebook of a friend who's like, I'm living the van life and they like quit their, their job. And they're traveling right. and they're doing a van thing and they're they're experiencing some successes and some setbacks but it's like wow they're taking that risk and they're taking that they're looking at life more as an adventure right right now and granted I, we couldn't go to italy right now <laughs> oh i know have you ever have you gone to italy before i have it's like my favorite place on oh. the i went for the first time last april and it blew it blew my mind i was like i loved it so much it's, it's pretty magical. Yeah. And it was yeah. one of those things too of like, you can make excuses on not doing it. Right. 
and you could be right in all those excuses, but the the memories that you create going there are it's hard to beat. Yeah, and the people are so amazing, and the build the architecture and the food and that like it's just amazing. I went to this place Cinque Terre, which is five towns is is the translation, and it's. I went to a place that was the birthplace of pesto and focaccia, and I love both of those. And so I just sat there and I ate for like three days in that area, and I it could not have been better. And the people were great, and the scenery—I mean, it was just tremendous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how did you get into improv? I got into improv. I did it my early 20s a million years ago and like liked it and just sort of forgot about it and then a couple of years ago um my life just kind of exploded and my 20-year marriage ended and all this stuff happened and i needed to find the fun back in my life and i needed to just sort of reconnect with me um and sought out bill cott and started taking his classes and just like totally got addicted like completely addicted and um, then I was simultaneously taking second city classes, which I'm still doing, which I know you teach there. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's just this like life. It's kind of religion for me at this point. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a philosophy, right? Yeah, totally. Oh, and I, yeah. I mean, and Bill's like one of the best teachers on the planet and he really, he gets both short form and long form and he, he really sets his students up to succeed and he gets no greater joy than watching people come in and seeing their lives, not just like their improv, but like their lives transform. Right. Yeah. It's, it really is life changing. And when you're ready for it and you're ready to take that kind of risk and um, yeah, it's, it's been the greatest thing ever. So what advice would you give a younger version of you, like just starting off in improv? What advice would you would you give that person? Um, sort of like let go of yourself and be you. And like Bill always has this exp had this expression in class about like make bad pancakes, like be a, be a fool, like make mistakes and just have a really good time, and don't like don't be so self conscious and like try to take that into your own life, your daily life. Oh, I love that. Yeah, he's got such a great way of looking at it and finding the joy in it. Yeah. And finding the joy in being wrong, which I don't think we allow ourselves as much of that in real life. Right, right. I mean, that's what improv is so freeing in that way. Oh. In the moments when I'm like in scenes and I'm like really like watching myself and from like, and I know it's like not going like, I don't, I'm sort of at the point where it's fine if it doesn't go well. It's yeah. really okay. Yeah. You're you're you've got so many more improv scenes inside of you. Right. Exactly. Like, man, that and then like that one's done, good or bad. That one right. we never have to do again. So whether it's a great scene or a scene you don't think when people watch us improvise, they're blown away. They really are, no matter how good or bad it is, because they People who've never taken a class don't understand that, wait, you're up there with nothing? Like, they, right. they can't right. comprehend. They're like, how do you make it? How does that happen? They just don't get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I also, now with COVID and everything, I like, it's a really cool community of people, too. I've made some really nice friendships. And on Saturday and Sunday, we just get on Zoom and, like, play. Um, and we have, like, this standing thing. And we're all, like, through improv, and it's just great. Now, are you doing uh, Zoom improv with people um, around the world? Are you doing it with people near you? Like, how, how are you spending your time doing it? Um, there are people that I met through Bill's class and then another person who I'm in uh, Second City classes with. So we just, like, play. And, you know, some of it is just, like, the social connection of it all. And then the rest of it is just, like, we're all really into the community and want to just, like, have a good time. Oh, I mean, yeah. in this day and age right now, that community, that connection is what I think human beings are missing the most. Completely. You know? Completely. I'm sure that's why you started this thing. Oh, 
It's a com- I'll be honest, Diane, it's a completely selfish reason. And that's it. <laughs> it's like, I need to connect with people and I, what's the safest and only way we can do it right now? Oh, I can do it online. And Bill was the first one because he and I have been improvising together for uh, 20, I think we've, I think 26 years now, we've done a two man show in one form or another. Yeah, he I've was heard your name forever. Yeah, forever. I, th- I think <laughs> when you when you get to a certain age, everything is a million years ago or forever, right? And so, so I reached out to him because I'm like, this is the guy I got to connect with because we've been connecting for so long. And I'm like, do you want to do one of these things? And of course he said, yeah. And it gave me that first spark of like, oh, okay, you can still connect. It's a, it's a little bit different, but in a lot of ways it's the same. And so mm-hmm. having that human connection for me was why I started to do it. And now why I keep doing it is to find those connections and get opportunities to play with people I, I wouldn't be able to play with or I don't play with enough. Right, right. Like Nathaniel's case, he's, he's connected with people all over the world. Yeah. And it's great. And you can do that now. And it's like all improvisers, like you said, you have this community. So you reach out to an improviser, no matter who they are, if they're online improvising, you reach out to them, they'll play with you. They're like, yeah, because that's what right. we have to do. We've got to play. Right. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially in this world right now, that's just so negative and toxic and ugh. Um, to have this love, like levity is yeah. so important. And to me, the sillier, the better. Yeah. Um, where can people, if they want to connect with you or like, you know, uh, jam with you or, or, or see what's happening or anything like that, what's the best way they can, they can uh, do that? Uh, probably Facebook would be easiest. Well, uh, my email's there too. So yeah. Oh, it was so fun playing with you. Uh, and I, I'll put, I'll put, uh, I'll, I'll make some comments in the uh in the section there but uh you're so fun to play with so easy and uh, uh what great training bill uh, laid down for you but then also like i've seen you take that and now you've just expanded that and, and you're able to to have these wonderful moments so playing with you is like playing with an old friend so thank you so much it was oh a- thank you jay yeah i can't wait to do it again whether it's um another virtual session or uh like in person face to face on a stage somewhere imagine that at second city when it reopens <laughs> it's gonna happen it's, yeah. at some point uh, exactly. oh, well thank you so much it was a blast thank diane you. i'll talk to you soon okay take care bye, bye.